Okay. Hello, my friends. Veda Dave here, wanting to offer a little Vedic astrological update because things are happening. Not sure if you've noticed. Uh, it's a wild world out there, and we see wars erupting on multiple fronts. Um, speaking with myself and friends and clients and other mental health colleagues, hearing reports that uh, suicidal ideation and attempts are are up right now, and and so we see this in the stars. So so let's run through uh, a variety of issues. Just gonna uh, as a summary, we're gonna look at Mars combust and conjoined K two. Uh, we're gonna look at the solar eclipse happening this weekend Saturday. Uh, we're gonna look at Rahu and K2 getting ready to change signs uh, at the end of this month, Rahu, especially in this Gandanta period. And um, that's that's what we're going to cover here. So uh, first up, Mars is combust too close to the sun, uh, getting burnt up. So Mars, that warrior planet, that red planet already fiery and with a tendency towards aggression and uh action with a willingness to break things and ideally in service of that which one holds sacred that warrior protective survival instinct is is in service of life ideally but when it gets sunburnt agitated irritated frustrated that uh, can lead to actions which are violent vicious uh, and coming from a place of survival fear but what is actually survival versus what is egoic survival? And, and are we destroying things that uh, actually need to be destroyed? You know, apoptosis, you know, cell cellular death in your body is a vital function for your health, but it can go too far, can't it? And so not only is Mars combust, it's joined Ketu, uh, the south node of the moon shadow planet that functions very similar to Mars. Of, of all the planets, K2 is most similar to Mars. And so you get these two together and K2 brings in this sort of past life, deep karmic component, the way uh, shadows and, and secret influences move through us. And we don't always know why we're compelled to do a certain thing or think a certain way, but this is the, the depth of the karmic subconscious moving through us. And it has this uh, yeah, intensity, this, this fiery quality to it. And so you put all that together and we see the literal explosions happening in the Middle East, in Europe, uh, all over the world in so many ways. And, and so all this is happening in the sign of Libra, which is generally the place of negotiation and sharing information and, and sort of happy dual relationships. I'll offer this if I receive that, that in return and we can share and, and balance scales. But you put all that anger, aggression, explosive violence in this realm of, of Libra and no one wants to negotiate or or no one even can negotiate in good faith and there it's not just that there's no communication the desire for communication is there but what gets communicated is vitriol uh dehumanization just straight hate and violence so uh that's what my social media feed is full of and it, it's heartbreaking and and so just the encouragement to uh feel all the rage feel all the fury and be careful who it's directed at. And, and let's remember that we're all humans born on planet earth and every human life is precious. All life is precious. And, and so ang I find myself being angry at the violence itself, not even the humans committing it, but the fact that that's our best coping mechanism in this moment is really deeply sad and and i yeah feel that feel that frustration and um rage at the suffering so so the other thing that comes with that is you know a lot of commentators have been calling this israel's 9 11 moment and so that that is very the parallel is there 
totally understandable. And so then the question is, what did we learn from 9-11? And, and what happened is that this horrible, terrifying, awful attack occurred. And then in the aftermath, it was used to justify horrific, misguided wars that created exponentially more suffering than the original attack. And, and so if this is Israel's 9-11, instead of being once again goaded into hate mongering and anti-Muslim rhetoric and justification for a wars of aggression, instead, we ought to be extremely mindful of what we're being told and who benefits and uh, be actively, aggressively advocating for peace as soon as possible. Because again, we don't want to repeat the the aftermath of 9-11, which was again, exponentially more destructive than the original act, which again, does nothing to justify the original violence, but um, this vengeful approach to foreign policy and this like deep karmic ancestral turmoil and and war is this infinite loop if we insist on vengeance at every turn and and so that's very much what's happening we're coming to the end of the two-week period of pitrupaksha in the vedic tradition which is the uh, the time of the ancestors, the, the time to be honoring the ancestors. And, and instead, what do we see? We see these ancestral battles raging anew, setting the stage for another generation of pain, hate, and anger, and violence. And, and so we can do better if we can be aware of these influences and not fall victim to the survival mind, the the fearful lizard brain within each one of us and instead use that energy and aggression to fight for peace and advocate fiercely and strongly and with incredible power for peace and use all of our strength to protect that which is sacred protect uh, the the lives of the precious humans involved uh, so that's mars combust conjoined K2 in Libra. Uh, and so uh, late Friday night, Saturday morning, uh, we've got a solar eclipse. It's an annular solar eclipse. So it's not total. You'll be able to see the ring of the sun around the outside of the moon when the eclipse is, is at its totality. And uh, so there's a new moon in the sign of Virgo, which again helps helps us actually to lean into logical thinking instead of getting caught up in the emotion and Virgo is very okay here's the systems at play here's the structural causes of what's happening and we don't need to get caught up in all the passion and emotion of it but there are practical grounded solutions and opportunities that we can actually build something instead of uh, yeah getting caught up and and so yeah that one of the ways I think about an eclipse is uh, with your computer when it's time for an update and you download the new software and then you have to shut down the computer and reboot it in order for the new software to actually start operating. And then you've got some new tools and maybe a new background on your screen and, and a new way of, of interacting with the device. And that's, that's for me is what an eclipse is where the luminaries, the sun and moon, get blocked out and so the sun which is the most constant source of light and life in this area of the solar, uh, solar system of the cosmos gets blocked out for a minute and so that's like this like this signal the the steady signal flips off and then comes back on and so in this time there's a lot of information coming through. There's some big downloads available. And so you want to be meditating and journaling and praying for as much clarity and, and recording all the information and the big feelings and the ideas and the plans and the images and being careful to track all of the information that you're of, that is available right now and record it, put it in the right place, but you don't have to do anything about it yet. 
wait until the actual shutdown and reboot of the system, which is after the eclipse, to actually put it into action. Because it's only when you are moving through and actually interacting with the new operating system that any of the information is going to make sense. Right now, it's just really intense information. And, and I know the impulse like, well, I have to take this great action. I have to you know, either reach out to resolve this conflict or break up or, you know, take, quit my job or do something intense. Like, okay, yeah, track that, take it in, record it, write everything you know about it, send yourself a voice note all about it and, and just pause, pause, no major decisions uh, in the couple days before this eclipse. Uh, so looking historically at the last time there was an eclipse with Rahu in Aries and uh, Ketu in Libra. And so that was one of them was in the year 2004. In, in, around this, the, the sort of equivalent time was, you know, October 16th, uh, sorry, October 14th, and then was the solar eclipse. And then October 27 and 28 was the lunar eclipse. And that's, that's a pretty close parallel to what we've got right now, where we've got this uh, solar eclipse this weekend, and then two weeks from now, the lunar eclipse. And, and so 2004, you know, looking at the timeline of Israel-Palestine conflict is a pretty sobering uh, exercise. And, and it's the sort of thing where it almost doesn't count for finding astrological uh, alignments because, you know, pick a month in, a, in any given year since the 40s and, and there's, um, there's something right? Uh, however, in the year 2004, right on October 16th, two days after this solar eclipse was the end of what was a 17-day military operation called Operation Days of Penitence, in which Israel uh, was in the Gaza Strip, and it was launched in response to a rocket that killed two children in Israel, and there were you know, 133 Palestinians killed, uh, about a third of whom were civilians in this 17-day military operation that ended October 16th, 2004, right in close alignment, you know, over the course of, of this eclipse period. So that was the last time there was an eclipse in, a solar eclipse in this alignment. And the other thing that happened in that time is Yasser Arafat died. He went into a coma on October 29th, 2004, right uh, in the day after the lunar eclipse and, and died almost two weeks later, November 11th, 2004, uh, in, in a coma. And so, you know, Yasser Arafat, controversial character, but he won a Nobel Peace Prize uh, as the leader of Fatah, who eventually came to the recognition of Israel's right to exist and tried to negotiate a two-state solution and uh, was a vital player in some progress at the time, but then ultimately was seen as a terrorist by Israel, was trapped in his compound and went into a coma and died right in this alignment uh, last time this, this eclipse cycle came through. So you know, in, in what ways do we see the impulse to negotiate and and uh, share data in a common way and, and actually have a fair and equal exchange in this conflict dying again this time? So, so insofar as Arafat embodied that desire to negotiate peace and equal exchange between these two peoples, and he died at this time. In what ways is that also dying right now? That's that's the parallel I see. And and not to mention the um, you know days of penitence, seventeen day military operation where uh, the IDF is now gearing up for what looks like an extended uh, operation. And so again, it's horrifying and and sad. And and looking at the astrological influences uh, for me helps give the bigger picture, understand the deep time history of the of the planet uh, as a resource not for escapism or avoidance or or any sort of bypass but as a resource to then engage with what's happening from a more grounded place uh, to un yeah because it's difficult right seeing the videos hearing the news 
uh, is, is a lot to take in. And it's totally understandable to need to take a break or step away from it. But it is also uh, necessary for those of us who care uh, and and uh, seek for world peace and, and some sort of evolution out of this tit for tat, warring uh, way of interacting in the world. It's not just Israel, Palestine, it's, it's all over the world, isn't it? Uh, and for those of us who seek some sort of evolution, again, we need to cultivate the power, strength, courage, uh, and fierceness, this, all these Mars qualities, to an equal measure as those who are willing to go to war. But we need all those qualities in service of peace. And we have to be able to match that, but with, with the willingness to negotiate and, and willingness to uh, protect again, that which is sacred. Um, and, and so again, like seeing it clearly from this zoomed out perspective helps me personally to cultivate some of that courage to, um, say and do the things that are within my power to do. So, yeah. So the, the other thing that's happening is, uh, Rahu and Ketu, the North and South nodes of the moon, these shadow planets, which are mostly invisible points up in the sky. This are karmic axis, past life, and, and what draws us forward into this next life and shows our compulsions and, and the sort of irrational desires. Like, I don't know why, I just need as much of this type of experience in this life as possible. That's, that's the Rahu quality. They're getting ready to change signs at the end of this month, October 30th, the, the nodes will change uh, Rahu goes from sidereal Aries into Pisces, and uh, K2 goes from sidereal Libra into Virgo. And so as they get ready to change signs, Rahu especially is in uh, the Gandanta point between Pisces and Aries, which is where a water sign meets a fire sign. It's this most tumultuous zone of the zodiac. And so I'm generally excited for Rahu to get out of Aries and move into Pisces. Um, it's been my personal Rahu return. So there's been a lot of, a lot of tumult in, in my life, but, but Rahu and Aries gives this like the like, impulsive action, a lot of energy and Rahu is like a tornado. Aries ruled by Mars is a very fiery place. So you get these fiery tornadoes that just sort of explode and act without thinking and, and purely impulse and, and straight desire without sort of pausing to think about what would the impact upon others. Um, and the other thing, once Rahu leaves Aries, it will no longer be joined Jupiter. And Jupiter is the, the meaning making function that helps us see all the different data points and connect the dots to make a coherent picture. It's the part of us that can look at the sky and instead of a bunch of random stars, we see constellations and can differentiate planets from stars. And, and so Jupiter is, is this wisdom creator and, and, um, the part of us, yeah, that makes meaning and puts the whole picture together. And Rahu distorts that and, and makes that uh, a confusing process. So perhaps we believe we're correct. We believe we've got the right picture, but we're actually confused and actually getting it wrong. And Rahu sort of this trickster, like poisoning the process. So we're very convinced that we're right and we know what's happening, but it's all distorted in, you know, like looking through a telescope, but it's blurry, but we think we're seeing, we believe we're seeing clearly. And, and so uh, once Rahu moves into Pisces again, at the end of this month, Jupiter will be able to operate with more clarity and hopefully we'll be able to see a little more clearly and connect the correct dots. Cause I mean, if you've ever done a connect the dots puzzle on a kid's paper placemat in a restaurant, you can totally do it wrong. And you know, if you don't follow the numbers, right, you can make whatever picture you want out of those dots if you zigzag instead of going in the right order. And so this is, this is with Rahu and Jupiter. And so that's going to change at the end of this month. Um, but first, but first, 
Rahu is in this Gandanta period and, and has been since late August and will technically be until the end of the year. But specifically starting yesterday and until November 17th is when Rahu is in within one degree on either side of the border between Pisces and Aries. And, and so this is the most intense time where it really is diving into the alchemical space between death and birth after death before birth and and the churn of that and and the images that arise for me are it's a very psychedelic space it's a very disembodied space and uh when the sort of material content of your experience is it's like a dream or it's all just thought stuff it can change very quickly and it goes from uh heavenly to hellish very quickly depending on the quality of your thoughts and so we want to be very very mindful of the quality of your thoughts right now again hearing from lots of people that suicidal ideation is on the rise and one of the things that we see with that is it's this mars energy and this rahu energy in aries which is ruled by mars stirring up this sort of dense heavy depressed uh you know you know, very, the world's a sad place. Earth is a hard place to be right now. And there's a lot to grieve. And, but when that heavy denseness gets activated or aggravated and fired up and agitated and irritated, all of a sudden, that's what suicidal ideation looks like. Uh, Ayurvedically, we're looking at pitta provoking tamas. It's, it's tamasic pitta. So tamas is that heavy, dense, depressed, way of looking at the world you know, pointlessness hopelessness which on its own usually doesn't even have the energy to contemplate something like suicide but when you add that fire element and that activation then all of a sudden things get explosive and and so again we want to be very very careful about the quality of our thoughts again how quickly does a fire move from being a campfire to a forest fire all it takes is a little gust of wind isn't it and and so tracking okay what's the quality of my digestive fire what's the quality and clarity of my mind what's the quality of the thoughts and the words that result am i being unconsciously cruel to myself to others am i having fantasies of violence am i uh, rehearsing angry conversations in my head and and if so can i catch it and soften and and identify the fierce feelings and redirect and give that energy healthy expression through exercise you know, physical movement does a lot yelling screaming in a safe place punching a punching bag uh, and and working it out that way because the rage is valid but how can we work with it and transmute it into something powerful and beneficial instead of something even more destructive. That being said, there are certain things that need to be destroyed in your own life, certain habits, patterns, ways of being that, that probably are appropriately, appropriately ready for a transformation. And that's what this Rahu, the, the nodal shift indicates is, is a new phase. And, and so um, if you're curious about what this nodal shift might signify for you what area of your life is it going to impact most what are the considerations you need to know for the next 18 months that's that's how long the nodes spend in one sign there's these 18 month cycles that come around every 18 years and so if you want to look at what it means in your chart specific to your evolutionary path and what you can be doing at this time to participate in the world in the best way and to uh, be evolving your own awareness and existence in in the best way possible, then reach out. We'd be happy to do a reading with you uh, below this video. You'll see some discount codes for uh, Eclipse season readings, uh, 20 bucks off a 30 minute reading and 50 bucks off a 90 minute reading. And you'll see those codes, uh, you know, Eclipse 1023 and Eclipse 2023 uh, respectively. So, so reach out. We'd love to have a look with you. Um, the other thing, you know, with all this is like what to do, right? It's, it's chaotic on a global scale. And one of the things that saves me on a daily basis and allows me to uh, continue to interact 
in the world in a good way despite all the chaos and and fear that that I feel and is is all around us uh is is some simple inner awareness practices that I call somatic imagination and so starting next week next Wednesday October 18th leading a 21 day practice where each day I'll offer a five to 10 minute meditation practice and a you know five to 20 minute video lesson explaining some of the core metaphysical concepts and also like very practical physiological nervous system uh, astronomical astrological facts that support this practice that and the whole thing somatic imagination the idea is to build coherence between your physical body and the abstract mind and because that is the pathway from internal harmony and coherence towards relational harmony and connection which then uh, contributes to collective connection and and coherence which create you know contributes to cosmic coherence and this is the micro to the macro and as Buckminster Fuller is famous for saying nature ha has one operating system. The micro is not fundamentally different than the macro. There's not different principles at play. It's all the same. And so by cultivating internal calm, confidence, clarity, creativity, compassion, if I can feel that within myself, then I'm going to move through the world and interact with others, human and non-human, with those qualities. And, and that's my microcosmic way of contributing to the vision for world peace and prosperity and and peace ease joy for for all involved here uh, so if you're interested in that check out somaticimagination.com there's also a link below you can get on the waiting list uh, there's sliding scale pricing there's a vip option there's some cool bonuses going to offer a class on the five forms of focus the five types of light sort of a parallel practice that can really help you uh, learn the mechanisms of how your own attention and awareness work so you can make conscious choices throughout the day so you're not stuck in one mode not that one mode is better than the other but what we want is dexterity and to be able to make a conscious choice about how you're going to interact with each phase of your day uh, so that's that's what's going on uh, here uh, again somatic imagination dot Come. We'll start that next Wednesday, uh, 21 days of daily practice. I'm really looking forward to it. It's it's the practice that literally saves my life uh, and helps me find calm in the midst of conflict or stuck in traffic or uh, when I'm trying to be creative uh, and, and um, be the best human I can be. So excited to share that with you. Uh, so that's, that's about it for now. Um, Take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Uh, please reach out with questions, comments, confusion, or enthusiasm. Uh, click the links below and, and book a reading. Let's, let's dive into what's happening in your story right now. And I look forward to seeing you for somatic imagination practice. And uh, until then, take care. Talk to you soon.